It's no secret that the lore of Poppy Playtime runs deep, and it might be confusing to keep track of all the toys and where they fit on a timeline. So let's go over the history of the characters and when they were created. Poppy Playtime is the oldest toy in the franchise that we know of. She's a porcelain doll created in 1950 that served as a preview for Playtime's interest in fusing life with toys. Poppy was made specifically to have conversations with young girls, something that was far beyond the technology of that time. And these weren't just pre-recorded lines from her voice box she was actually responding to whatever was being said to her. This is pretty interesting because it shows that Playtime's experience with bringing toys to life predates Harley Sawyer and the Bigger Bodies initiative. While we weren't sure if the poppy in the commercial is the same poppy that we encounter in the game, we do know that this toy was Playtime's big break. Poppy allowed for the company to receive attention and notoriety from all across the country due to their groundbreaking technology. Her design was also aesthetically pleasing to children. She had curly red hair that would remain sturdy, a blue dress, and shoes that needed to be shined. Her hair also smelled like poppies, which served as foreshadowing for the red smoke. It's unclear if Playtime Co. was experimenting with children this early, but it definitely supports the idea of Experiment 814 in which Elliot Ludwig used poppy gel on rats to examine its properties. It's theorized that Poppy is actually the daughter of Ludwig. Transferring her soul into a toy would be a way to make her live forever after she tragically lost her life and Mob makes it clear from the very beginning that there's a human inside of her. For starters, she says lines like this. I'm a real girl, just like you. When observing Poppy's eyes, you can clearly see veins making them appear almost bloodshot. And of course, in the Poppy maintenance tape, when taking out her voice box, it's covered in blood. Another eerie detail about the tape is that in the beginning, she's not facing the camera, but at the end, she's staring directly at us. This comes right after a screen that flashes the words, let me go, a plea to free her from her torture. But nothing would come of this as Playtime Co. would continue to carry out questionable operations. Soon after, Playtime would come into the picture, and it's possible that this is when Miss Delight was created. When Ludwig first introduced Playcare through the VHS tape on Elliot's Express, he didn't sound very old, but rather closer to his narration in the Poppy commercial that was released in 1950. But if we look at Miss Delight's clothing, we can see that it looks a bit older than the 1950s. It's unsure when she was created, but if it was around the same time as Playcare, then along with Poppy, it would make her much older than other creations. There were at least seven other teachers that resembled Miss Delight, but their end would come in 1995. But way before that, another toy was created in 1966, and that was Boxy Boo although his toy wasn't as successful as others. 18 years after his release, however, Playtime would finally strike gold in 1984 with the creation of Huggy Wuggy and sales would skyrocket. Playtime decided to capitalize on this success by creating Kissy Missy in 1985, essentially the female version of Huggy. But while everything seemed innocent on the surface of Playtime Co., things started to get sketchy. Probably around the late 80s to early 90s, the prototype or Experiment 1006 was created. He's thought to be the very first successful experiment meant to kick off the Bigger Bodies initiative. Established by Harley Sawyer in 1991, it was seen as a way to create subservient labor for a cheaper cost, all while avoiding debt and lawsuits. 
If workers weren't actual people, then it would solve a lot of problems, according to Sawyer. The weird thing about the prototype is that we don't know what he's supposed to be. The rest of the bigger bodies that came after were based off Playtime merchandise, while this one is still unknown, much like his appearance. The prototype also didn't need any food to survive, which was very different from other experiments to come. He also exhibited violent behaviors and was kept under a close eye by scientists. But it was clear that 1006 had outwitted every employee and was planning something big. Something that would completely destroy the Bigger Bodies initiative. But it was just getting started. Even though Boxy Boo wasn't as successful as his toy counterparts, he was still deemed useful in the name of science. Considered to be the first successful Bigger Body, Boxy Boo, aka 1160, would be in charge of getting rid of employees who knew a little bit too much. For example, Rowan Stoll discovered the horrific secrets of Playtime and documented his journey, promising to reveal all of it. But in 1991, he ended up getting eaten by Boxy Boo, never to be heard from again. Experiment 1160 is also known to possess enhanced mobility. While playing as Boxy in Project Playtime, you can jump over barriers and travel around the map with maximum efficiency. He also has quick jabs, a function which allows you to attack subjects with ease. All in all, Boxy Boo is a very capable toy with many different abilities. It's no wonder that Harley Sawyer marveled in his greatness. The first of May, naturally. You have proven my bigger body's initiative a success. Many doors have opened today, thanks to you. Now, we need to start tailoring that appetite of yours to flush. Where to start? This clip also tells us that Boxy didn't always want to eat other people, but he was trained to which makes you wonder if he could have been a friendly companion in Project Playtime. But with science on their side, the company was able to mold Boxy Boo into the perfect monster, wrecking havoc for anyone who got in his way. But this was only part of something much worse. Huggy and Kissy's bigger bodies would be created in 1991, and while we don't know Kissy's experiment number, we know that Huggy was 1170. For the Bigger Bodies initiative, Huggy's role involved security. In one of Rowan Stoll's VHS tapes, he indicates that Huggy seems to have cameras in his eyes watching the children. Some, if some creep is hiding nanny cams in our mascot's eyeballs, then something needs to be taken seriously. This, however, wouldn't be the only problem involving Huggy. On July 18th, 1992, 1170 would somehow successfully escape the factory. It took a while for the team to go after him, but their attempt wouldn't come without sacrifices. After being shot at with darts, Huggy would target his attackers. There were 11 casualties, 5 either missing or dead. And after running to a familiar home, Huggy was captured and taken back to the factory by workers who were still alive. Prior to this incident, by one to three years, Playtime decided to produce their own lineup of toys called the Smiling Critters. They were animal plushies that consisted of Bobby Bear Hug, Bubba Bubba Fint, Kickin' Chicken, Crafty Corn, Picky Piggy, Dog Day, and Catnap. The line was so successful that it even had its own cartoon. Catnap's plush, however, was recalled due to the mysterious gas that it pumped, making children across the country have violent nightmares. It's unsure how close this recall was to the release of the toys, but we do know that Catnap's story was far from over. His bigger body was created in the early 90s from an orphan named Theodore Grambell. Under the influence of the prototype, 
Theo decided to steal a grab pack and escape, but ended up injuring himself so bad that the only way to save him was to transition into a toy. And we can assume that the bigger bodies of the smiling critters were also made around the same time. But Catnap would isolate himself from the others, still under the influence of 1006. Dog Day and the rest of the smiling critters didn't really agree with the prototype and formed a sort of resistance to him. Dog Day being the unofficial leader of the group. Around the same time in 1991, the bigger body of Mommy Longlegs was created. Interestingly enough, her toy was made after her bigger body. This is due to the success she garnered in the factory as the children loved her. Her commercial emphasized Playtime Co's patent elastic plastic which could stretch far distances. Mommy's bigger body, however, was created from Mary Payne, an orphan that we learn about in Claire Harper's VHS tape. Marie was experiencing violent nightmares due to Catnap's red smoke, and unfortunately, Harper would not get to see her after the incident. Mary was then transformed into experiment 1222, Mommy Longlegs, but she didn't make the process easy. Mommy was known for being aggressive towards staff, but acted as a mother figure toward the children and was kind to the other experiments. Much like the others, she was a part of something that the prototype was planning. Four years later, on August 8th, 1995, the toys would go on a mass killing spree, attacking any employees that they saw. At around 11 a.m., Kissy and Missy can be seen going after employees near her. Huggy would be doing the same in a different location. Mommy also joined in picking up and dropping workers in the game station, while Catnap just threw people around playcare like ragdolls. Poppy, however, would be trapped by the prototype in a glass case, possibly filled with red smoke, causing her to enter a sleepy state. It's not quite clear why the prototype didn't just kill her for not siding with him, but he felt that it was important to keep her alive. And while Poppy was in a deep sleep, all of her teachers were trapped in the school, eventually going mad and turning on each other. Miss Delight came out on top and ate the others to survive. Ten years later, the toys are still here and seem to be waiting for our return. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and click on this video right here.